Last week in Round Sailing, we explored the amazing the bass in the BVIs. We did some island hopping and in Trellis Bay we recorded a podcast with On the Wind. We had sailed to Soppers Hole, Tortola, to jump aboard another vessel. It's early in the morning, we're here at the ferry dock, over there is Ron, and today we're going to the US! First time for me, and uh, we're going there to get the American stamp in our passports, so we can go back with Ron! Bye bye Ron, see you in the afternoon! to get our stamp in our passports. Um, yeah, we need to do it this way because uh, Ron is not a registered entity. So we can't, uh, because we don't have any visas, uh, proper visas, so we need to do it this way. We uh, get a normal ESTA, like you fill in an uh, online form, the same as you use as a European if you go going to fly to the US. And then we take this ferry, which is a registered entity, to the US from the BVIs and we get the stamp in our passports. Then we can go back and get Ron and sail to the US Virgin Islands, Spanish Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico on our own with Ron. And this way we're allowed to stay in the US Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico for uh, 90 days, I think it is. Um, so I, I guess you can say it's a not a loophole, but uh, it's a way to do it. It's a bit more uh, expensive than the normal visa. We have to pay around 200 bucks to do this round trip with the ferry, and uh, because we need to pay the ferry, the exit tax from the BVIs, and then also the exit tax from the user night to come back here to the BVIs. It's a bit of a hassle to do this, but uh, it's the only way because we hadn't thought about going here in the, in the beginning. Otherwise, we had would have had uh, proper visas. U.S. Virgin Islands, Spanish Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico are all U.S. territories. They have a special agreement which enables foreign vessels to enter their territory without the U.S. visa. And most boats do this via the BVIs. I got my stamp, they took my fingerprints, so now we can go on uh, American ground. After a stroll nearby the harbor, we decided to take the ferry back to Tortola, so we could get going sooner. Because now we were ready to sail to U.S. territory. So to conclude it, uh, this stamp was the most expensive stamp I've ever got, and uh, also a very expensive ferry. I mean, it only takes 20 minutes. Now I have it, and we can go to Puerto Rico! Now I have to fill in another form, because we're entering uh, the BVI's. <laughs> Again. <laughs> A lot of bureaucracy. Uh, yeah. All this for a stamp in your passport.
We set off right away, and the goal for the day was to sail to a small uninhabited island called Great Tobago Island. Are you looking forward to go to an island with no people? Definitely. <laughs> no, but you know, here in the BVI it's just kind of crowded. Everywhere you go there's a lot of boats and uh, you know, that's not really the problem. The problem for us is that all the good anchorages are filled with these mooring balls. So it's really, really hard in some places to find a good spot to anchor. And uh, yeah, in some areas you can't really anchor because it's, yeah, you're too tight to the mooring balls. Yeah, like here in Supper's Hole, the area where you could anchor was a bit too deep, like 18, 20 meters. So we were kind of forced to take a mooring ball and they're like 30 bucks a night. And I think, sure, if you're here on a vacation for a week or two, that's fine. But for us that are on a cruising budget, that's really a lot of money. So we can't afford that. But I'm really looking forward to come to the Spanish Virgin Islands and uh, the Port Puerto Rico. That would be nice. And uh, what was the main town called? Uh, San Juan. Yeah, San Juan in Puerto Rico. That will be the first major city that we'll visit since we were in uh, Europe, I guess. Las Palmas was maybe the last big town that we were in. We decided to sail directly to Culebra, so we could have more time in Puerto Rico. So, we ended up here instead. Uh, our plan to anchor at uh, Great Tobago, what was the name? Island. Great Tobago Island uh, didn't go as planned. Because, you know, the, the bay where we were supposed to anchor, it was, you know, not crowded. There was just one, another boat. But they used a stern anchor and they were in the middle of everything and there was no space for us to put our anchor on the sand, only on the coral and we didn't want to do that. So we decided to move on and sail, yeah, was it six, seven extra nautical miles here to the US Virgin Island instead. So now we're at uh, St. Thomas in a bay called uh, Megan's Bay, right? It's really beautiful here, really nice beach. We would love to go ashore, but unfortunately we're not allowed to do that because we haven't checked in and I don't think you can do it here either. So we'll stay on the boat, we have hoisted the queue flag and tomorrow morning we will sail to Culebra instead. So this, this will just be a night tanker. But it's a really nice place, really calm and yeah, secure anchorage for the night. I want to take a walk along the beach. Yeah, it looks nice, the beach. Yeah, we just left uh, Morgan's Bay. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but I guess this used to be a Danish island and the bay here is called uh, Morgan. It's the same name as uh, stomach in English, but I don't know. Anyway, Morgan's or Megan's Bay, we just left it and uh, we're going to sail to Culebra today. We have a straight downwind sail and uh, right now we have 
nine knots of wind uh, through so not very not so much we're doing four and a half knots and we have um, yeah how do you say we're a goose wind with the sails so um, yeah it's a 20 mile sail and uh, right now everything is perfect and I just put a preventer on the main uh, don't think we will need it today but it's always good to have a preventer on the boom I like that As we left St. Thomas behind, the wind shifted a bit towards the southeast, which gave us a nice broad reach to Culebra. So what are we doing now, Malin? Mm, we are sailing in through the channel. They made like a boiled channel. So they have a buoys uh, all the way in. And in here is like a, almost like a lagoon, but it's not closed. But it's, um, I think it's one and a half mile long. So it's really long. And I think we're gonna go as far in as we can. Uh, because there is the um, custom and immigration is at the airport, so we need to walk over there. Yeah, we got a bit unlucky when we were jiving out here, coming into the channel. One of the lines snagged the, the solar, solar panel. So it's a bit bent, the bracket for the solar panel. So, another thing on the list to fix. The reason for the Boy Channel are the numerous shallow reefs surrounding the entrance to Ensenada Honda. We weren't the only ones who had arrived to Culebra, so had also Dan and Kika from Sailing Uma. We had been in contact with each other for some time, and finally our paths crossed. After a quick look at Uma, another sailor, Jim, invited us all for sundowners on his boat. There we met the guys from Sailing Doodles, who also happened to be on the island.
thank you guys for watching this episode we hope you liked it and yeah stay tuned for the next one so don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up that really helps us out a lot and hey if you'd like to support the making of these videos please click into our patreon page see you in the next one bye Thank you.